Well, I found someone that I started listening to. You know how you can find new teachers all over? Well, now I found a Jamaican. I found him in Jamaican, and his name is Muji, M-O-O-J-I. And my brother Naranjan told me about him. He said, he reminds me you, he reminds me, Lee, of you, except he's Jamaican, he speaks in a different dialect, and everything about him is different, but he reminds me of you. So I, I had to watch him. And so I probably have watched about three hours of him, and there's a lot of great stuff on him. But here's something that came out that I really loved. I'm not seeing the world as it really is, but rather I am seeing the world as I am. Just embrace that. You're not really seeing the world as it is, but you're seeing it as you are. So whatever's happening in the world out there, it has nothing to do, you're not seeing the same reality. Everyone in this room is seeing a completely different world than the other person. Because they're all coming from a different perspective. They're all coming from their own idea of who they are. And so in order to live in harmony, we've got to start to embrace the idea that people do not see the world as we see the world. And then we've got to come and look at it from the idea of, wait a second, how am I distorting what's happening in the world? That's really critical because how am I distorting what is really happening? So there was a tax bill passed this week. Big news, there's a lot of controversy, both sides are da 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 and I have some feelings about this tax bill. But what I feel is not important. What I have to realize is who am I first? I am the individualization of God as you are the individualizations of God. That means right now I am whole, I am perfect, I am complete, I am unique as I am. That all my happiness, all my wealth, all my health, all my relationships, all the love do not come from an external source, they come from an internal source which is within me. Therefore, does what Congress do impact my life? No. I think back to my entire life going from the age of zero to where I am now, which is well above zero, and anything that Congress has done has never really impacted me. It's never impacted me. My wealth, my health, my relationships are my personal responsibility of how I see myself, how I bring myself, how I live myself in the world. So when I heard about this tax plan, I said, it's not going to touch me because it's never really touched me because I've always been abundant. But if I didn't believe I was abundant, I would come from a place of lack. And then I look at what happened with the healthcare thing and all of this type of thing. Well, I'm focusing, I can't focus on the world right now. In many ways, I have to focus on myself because that's where everything starts. It starts within us because the only thing we can change is our own unique perspective, which changes our experience. We cannot change others. Contrary to how much we want to change others, we cannot. Here's what I know is I've always been healthy. I'm 66 years of age, I'm on zero meds. I have zero health problems. I get a virus every once in a while. My wife, bless her, is a year younger than me. She is on zero meds, no health issues whatsoever because we've embraced the idea that if we are individualizations of God, then health is our natural birthright. What takes us out of our natural birthright is how are we allowing this human world to bring stress into our lives? You see, when we bring stress into our lives, we open the door for dis-ease 
Because if you look at all the scientific studies that are coming out more and more and more, most diseases, 85% of the time, are caused by stress. Who controls stress? We do. The other aspects of exercise, what we eat, um, who we hang around with, that type of thing, those are things we also control. So when I look at the external world, I say, it's happening out there. I have to be aware of it. I'm living in it, but I don't have to let it live me. Do you hear that? So I'm going right there. I want to see the world as I am, but I want to make sure that I am the man I want to be. I'm not someone else's creation of Lee. So we're going to get into that a little bit. How, you see your, how to see yourself as you really are. The first thing we do is we stop fearing change and we must embrace it. Change is natural. It's always going to be, it's always been, it always will be. The government is changing. Embrace the change. We have to have change in the government to change the government. Does that make sense? Right now, whether, however you see it, whether on one side or the other, the government is not working. It's not working for the greaterness of the people, of the mass, of the whole people. So in order for it to change, there has to be contrast. The contrast brings people to a greater sense of clarity, whereby when they do vote, they're able to vote for what they feel the change they desire to be. Does that make sense? So everything that's happening is about bringing clarity to us. Now, it may not bring the same clarity, but it's bringing clarity to us as individuals. So change is happening in your relationships, it's happening in your health, it's happening in your job, it's everywhere. We get most, most mental illness is a result of expecting something unrealistic, expecting things to be, oh, like they were in the 1950s, where we have the model parents, the model homes, the model schools. Wait a second, I was brought up in the 50s. I was born in 1951. I want to tell you, it wasn't that great. But you see, what we do is we look backwards and we pick out only what we liked and we leave behind what we didn't like. I remember in the 50s, it was so great. My mother had a tumor this big inside her uterus. They thought she was pregnant. My mother's hormones were whacked out. She was an emotional thing. I was, my brother and I were moved from grandmother to grandmother to aunts to everywhere. We didn't, we didn't even know we had a mother for two years of our lives. I didn't realize, realize this until recently when I started doing some inner work. I started thinking about why was it so great? My father was working three jobs just to make ends meet. It's the same thing as now. Is God calling me? <laughs> Yes, God. Oh, you want me to talk about that? Okay, I will. Um, you, would, you don't want to hear what God just told me to say. <laughs> the 50s, so I'm thinking about it. My father, in 1959, got a 1941 Chevrolet. He thought it was the cat's meow. That car was on the rack being worked on every other day. So I think about the 50s. We lived in Dearborn, Michigan, and in the summer it got 95, 98 degrees. No air conditioning. Ooh. So were the 50s really that great? They're only as great as you remember them. The 60s, were the 60s that great? They're only as great as you remember them. The 70s, the same thing, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and the 2010s, the 17, the teens. This right now, 20 years from now, will be the greatest time to have lived because that's how we're going to remember it. So we've got to embrace the idea of change. Now watch this. We went up one. I tried to screw with you there because <laughs> you're thinking it's going to go down in bullets. And I said, let's change this up on them today. So you've got to stop trying to please everyone. You've got to just quit pleasing others and start by being yourself. 
Because until you become yourself, you can't be in the world as you authentically are, and no one can possibly love you because you're not being who you are. And if you're not being who you are, how can you be loved? How can you be accepted? It's the embracing of ourselves. Be yourself. I love that. Be you, and I'll be me. And maybe we'll dance, and maybe we won't. Maybe we'll play today, maybe we'll play tomorrow. You see, it doesn't matter. As long as you're being yourself, life is good. Stop living in the past. Oh my gosh, how many people here hear stories from people? You know, when I was in high school, I was a fullback. I ran for four touchdowns on that day. That was Al Bundy, I think it was, from uh, Married with Children. He was constantly reliving his past. How many times do we relive our past? Not only the glory moments, but how many times are we reflecting on when a girl or a boy broke up with us and we didn't deserve it? And because we keep reliving that, it becomes a pattern in our life. How, how many times have we relived the fact, oh, I got fired from that job? That meant I wasn't living up to the expectation. Has anyone here been fired from a job? I would almost say everyone's hand should. I have been. I've been either fired or let go or um, what do you call, laid off three times. And I want you to know, do you know why you get fired and laid off? Because a job and you are not a vibrational match. It's just that simple. Your frequency and what you want in life doesn't equal what that job is putting out there. Therefore, you cannot coexist for a long period of time in that environment because the frequencies are they're, they're contrary. So sooner or later, it's going to all disappear. You just got to understand that. Be yourself. Stop judging yourself and begin to see your life in balance. No one is judging you that matters other than you. Did you hear that? No one is judging yourself that matters. You see those two words, that matters is you. Because when you are lying on your deathbed, the only person that's going to be, you're reflecting back on your life is you are going to be looking back in your life and saying, was I kind enough? Was I generous enough? Was I giving enough? Was I truly authentic enough? That's the most important thing is, am, was I living to my greatest potential? Was I being the best Lee I could be? Now, you don't have to worry about the past where you weren't the best because probably in the past, you were the best you could be at that time. See, that's the thing we've got to realize. When I was in my 20s, I was not as aware as I am now. So in my 20s, well, I might have been um, obnoxious, headstrung, ego-centered, and even more things than that. I realized that was the best I could be then. I couldn't have been any better than that. I didn't have the wisdom of life behind me to make a different choice. You see, life is about having experiences over and over and then making choices. Without the experiences of life, we've got nothing from which to base a new choice. Isn't that just incredible when you think about it? So the, all the experiences we've had, all the relationships that didn't work, the jobs that didn't work, the money we may have lost on silly investments, all of that gave us a wisdom from which we could be ourselves now and be more authentic and real. And most importantly, be more conscious. So the key thing is, can I live this life and be more conscious? Because it's in the consciousness where we make new decisions. Here's a real good one. Stop overthinking everything and follow your heart. We have been so conditioned to live in our left brain, our left brain, the analytical brain, the rational brain, that we're constantly looking at everything and analyzing and analyzing and analyzing and analyzing it. Well, wait a second. What does the heart want? What does that intuitive nature in you want? If you're going through a divorce, what does your heart want from the divorce? Not what does the lawyer tell you, not what does your mother tell you, not what does your father tell you, what does your heart want? Number one, there's two things your heart's gonna want, and I know already. One is you want your freedom. Number one, the most important thing is you want your freedom, because that's the underlying value that we all share that we cannot ever give up. Number two, 
is you want to be treated equally. When you really break it down, that's what that boils down to. In any relationship, if you don't have freedom, it's time to end the relationship and get into a relationship where you are given the freedom and you give the freedom and that you equally share and support and grow each other. You see, that's what it's about. It's, stop overthinking, well, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to, no, that's overthinking, that's rationalizing it. And rationalization will never keep a relationship together. It'll hold it together, but chances are it's going to be miserable. The heart wants to be free, to laugh, to joy, to express. I've been married God forever. And my most joyful times with my wife is not when I'm rational, it's when I'm Lee the child when I'm Lee impulsive, when I'm Lee that's in the moment, when I'm Lee that's free, when I'm Lee that's not obligated to do something, I'm Lee that's choosing to do something. See, there's a real difference in that. I don't like obligation. In fact, I don't do obligation. I do my choice. And I choose it based on what are my values and how do I wanna show up in the world. We talk a lot about values at Agape, and in January we'll have another workshop on that. So if you've not figured out your values or you want to refigure them out, January will give you that opportunity. So, I'm going to go back to my buddy here. Let's go back to Muj. I'm not seeing the world as it really is, but rather I'm seeing it as I am. The question that we ask next is the biggest question we can ever ask is, who am I? We've talked about that I am and you are unique, individualized expressions of love of the infinite. Okay, we get that, okay. We know we're the expressions of the infinite. But what is it about us that makes us unique? Because everyone in here is unique. We have to embrace it. Everyone in here is unique then how do I step into that uniqueness so I can live my life, so I can give my gift? Because when we are doing that, our lives are blissful. I love the way John, John D. Martini says it. When we are living to our highest values, we see everything as on the way and nothing in the way. That is one of the most beautiful statements I've ever, ever heard. Because how many times have you gone up against that brick wall and you're saying, oh my God, I can't go around that brick wall. It's because you're not living to your highest values. That's off the path. But if you've got a brick wall and you say, hey, no problem. I'll either go over it, I'll go through it, or I'll go around it because I know it's part of the journey. When I was in Peru, in the jungles of Peru, I'm there going, holy garbanzo beans, the journey was incredible. All the missed flights, the lack of language, trying to get to a destination, getting to the destination, and then you're in this vehicle and you're, you're in this like pickup truck, four-wheel drive, and you're hanging outside in the back with all the luggage with six other people. There are four people in the cabs, and it's solid rain, and you're going down jungle roads up hills and mountains that are solid mud, and you're sliding off about to go over ravines, and you're there for three hours doing that, and you're going, what am I doing here? <laughs> it was part of the journey. You see, the journey was about getting into isolation, being still, releasing my outer world attachment, but there was a process to get there, and that was the mud journey. And so if that wasn't bad enough, we're leaving the jungle. We're leaving the jungle. It hadn't rained in 10 days. It was an easy trip. Wake up in the morning, sun is shining, and then all of a sudden, a torrential downpour. The trip back was six hours. Coming back, I got moved from airline to airline. It took me 48 hours to fly home. But what I realized is that that's what life is about. There's always this the highs and the lows, the peaks and the valleys, but it's on the journey. So that's why we meditate. 
We meditate to bring a stillness to us so that when we go through these type of events, we can be the observer and not the victim. See, this is the gift about meditation. Meditation teaches us, be still and know that I am. And the I am is so much more than this little I am that is the ego. And so we can go through an adventure like I'm talking about or I've talked about, and we can observe it from the higher perspective And from the higher perspective, we have no fear. So as you look at the world this week, I want you to remember that the world you are seeing is looking through the perspective that is driven by your beliefs that you've either consciously or unconsciously chosen. And if you want to see the world differently, all it takes is for you to change. Let's pray. I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm so grateful that you took your time to watch or listen to this message. If you found this message beneficial, I would ask that you go to our website, agapecsl.com. Once there, click on the donate button and experience the joy of conscious and purposeful giving. Or if you would like, text your gift by simply dialing 972 532 6976. It is through your gifts that we are able to bring this message to you in the world. I would ask that if you like this message, to please subscribe to my YouTube channel under my name, Lee Wallach. Again, I want to thank you for joining me in the Gopi community as we learn how to better self-love through conscious living.